Hello, hello, welcome to the video. The much requested Giganontosaurus video, because I guess all of you either absolutely loved Jurassic World Dominion, or Dinosaur Train is to blame for your taste in women. I'm not taking that back. One thing I do want to say before I start this is that there will still be some comparisons with Tyrannosaurus made here and there despite my previous scripted video. Admittedly, I am sick of it, and you probably are too, but considering that this dinosaur is pretty much famous only because T-Rex exists, comparisons are bound to be drawn in this video. Like I remember your dinosaurs are wrong saying, it seems like ever since Giganontosaurus was found, people have been comparing it to the king in any which way possible. After this I will do my best to shut the F up about this comparison, however. And I will follow this up by saying that I consider Spinosaurus and Giganosaurus to be the only dinosaurs worth comparing in a fight with Tyrannosaurus, so please suggest some other fight comparisons. Someone already suggested to me Torvosaurus vs Saurophaganax, so you can expect that at some point, but for now, on to Giganotosaurus. According to Theropod database, the first discovery would be in the form of a tooth found in 1987 near a lake I'm not even going to try and pretend to pronounce the name of. And separately to that, a fragmentary jawbone was also found in 1987 at Cerro Los Candeleros, which would later be described in a 1989 paper. Neither the 1989 paper describing the jawbone or the 1999 paper describing the tooth would assign a new genus name, however. The 1989 paper would note that the jaw is unlike any other theropod jaws known at the time, and that the animal it belonged to might have rivaled T. rex in size. You can already see what I meant earlier about how since the beginning we've been comparing these two. The poor thing wasn't even named at the time for God's sake, and we were already comparing it to T-Rex. In 1993, a roughly 70% complete skeleton would be dug up, consisting of vertebrae, parts of the skull, ribs, femur and tibia, and much more. This would later be partially described in a 1995 paper and would be given the name Giganotosaurus carolini by Rodolfo Correa and Leonardo Salgado. The genus name Giganotosaurus translates roughly to giant southern lizard, whilst the species name carolini is in reference to the amateur fossil hunter at the time who discovered the specimen, Rubin D. Carolini. So the full name means something along the lines of Carolini's giant southern lizard. In the 1995 paper, they'd estimate the animal to be about 12.2 metres long and somewhere in the 6 to 8 metric ton range. At the time, most people thought T Rex was only around 6 metric tons, so the media's response was predictable to say the least. Since then, other estimates would come around, such as a 2007 study finding it to be 13.8 metric tons, which, as I explained in my Carcodontosauridae Tyrannosauridae video, can't be trusted. And more recently, the 2019 book Theropods and Other Dinosaur Forms placed the holotype at 7 metric tons and the jawbone specimen as being around 8.5 metric tons. Other stuff I've read before writing the script, which you should be able to find on DeviantArt, also placed the holotype at around 6.2 to 6.9 metric tons, and the second specimen at around 7.4 to 8.2 metric tons. So it seems like the original 1995 paper was relatively spot on when comparing it to more modern estimates. As a side note, some stuff you may read online, including some possible sources for this video, state that the jawbone is somewhere around 6.5 to 8% larger than the holotype, which is true, but it must be remembered that this doesn't mean the second specimen is 6.5 to 8% larger than the original holotype overall. Anyway, just because the original paper was spot on about the size doesn't mean that everything was spot on when it came to beliefs about the animal. There was arguments over where it belonged on the dinosaur family tree, with some saying it was a tetanurin theropod and leaving it at that, while others believed it was a megalosaurid. Today, however, thanks to Sereno and colleagues, it's nestled within the clade Carcodontosauridae, with many other famous carnivores, such as Carcodontosaurus and Acrocanthosaurus, and others. Giganosaurus would also end up becoming the namesake of a clade within Carcodontosauridae called Giganotosaurini. This clade contains the dinosaurs Giganotosaurus, Mapusaurus, Tyrannotitan, and Maraxes. 
Besides some anatomical features that the average layman watching this might not be interested in hearing about, these four are united in this clade due to them being more closely related to each other and all being found in South America. I remember in his video on Tyrannotitan, Chimera Suchus said some people believe that what we're seeing with Tyrannotitan, Giganosaurus, and Mapisaurus is actually the same lineage slowly evolving over time from one animal to another, meaning that Tyrannotitan is the ancestor of Giganosaurus and Mapisaurus is the successor of Giganosaurus. For those wondering where Merexes fits in, as far as I know, Merexes lived with Mapisaurus, so it probably filled the niche of medium predator, while Mapisaurus was the apex predator. Another belief about Giganosaurus, which has persisted to this day, has been how long the skull was. Yes, we have material of the skull, but we don't have the full thing, so it begs the question of how long was it in life. According to Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong, some estimated it as low as 153 centimeters, while others suggest as high as 195 centimeters. One study also placed the skull length at about 162 centimeters when basing it partly on the much more complete skull of the recently discovered Maraxes Giges. Maraxes sounds like it's Latin, but it's actually just the name of a dragon in some nerd books for nerds. Though I should note that even when basing this on Maraxes, we were offering to find an actual intact skull or near intact skull before stating as fact that it was this or that size. This is a running theme with this dinosaur by the way, everything is either speculation with this thing or argued over to death. Speaking of which, another one is how fast it ran in real life, which is really more so a problem all prehistoric animals face. Unless you have a trail of footprints of the thing sprinting at full speed, there's nothing to go off of, so people have to get creative. A 2001 study placed Giganosaurus at a monstrous speed of 50 kilometers an hour, one of the highest estimates I've heard of for the running speed of a theropod over six tons. However, this would be challenged. This animal was at least comparable in size to some T-Rex specimens, and T-Rex is believed to have achieved speeds of around 20 to 25 kilometers, with more extreme estimates saying 30 plus kilometers. Some have gone as high as 74 kilometers, though these are considered unreliable. The book Theropods and Other Dinosaur Forms used Laramendi's formula for estimating theropod speed, since he's one of the authors, and listed Giganosaurus as reaching speeds of approximately 33.3 km an hour. This is better, and even though I like this formula since it allows me to estimate theropod speeds myself so I don't need to spend 5 minutes googling stuff, there are problems with this formula. They state in the book itself that this formula is more so for an approximate value and not exact, and I've seen people online complaining about some estimates their sauropod speed formula gives. So it's more so a give or take sort of situation with this formula since it doesn't factor in stuff such as how much muscle the animal might have. And I should also bring up some other speculation around this number. Up until I started researching this video, I wasn't aware of this, but I feel the need to point it out. You see, Laramendi's formula requires the lengths of the femur, the tibia, and the third metatarsal. We don't have a third metatarsal of Giganontosaurus, meaning this number is even more speculative than if we had a third metatarsal. And just as a final note on estimates for speed, according to my favourite dinosaur website, a 2017 study placed the animal at about 21 to 29 kilometers an hour, which is much, much better than the 2001 study. Moving away from that, even if we may never know how fast it might have run for real, I must point out that based on the tibia and femur, Giganosaurus wasn't built as a runner, according to Dougal Dixon's book, The Complete Illustrated Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs and Prehistoric Creatures. The main prey of adults was stuff like Andysaurus, a large sauropod at least 7 to 25 metric tons in weight, according to Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs. Sauropods weren't designed to be fast, they were primarily built to support the sizes they reached. Their feet, for example, were just columns designed for bearing dozens of tons of flesh. This means that Giganosaurus wouldn't need to be very fast for starters, and anything smaller and faster probably would not be a transaction of calories in versus calories out in favour of Giganontosaurus. And as a final nail in the coffin of Giganosaurus reaching 50 kilometers an hour, according to Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong's video on Giganosaurus, the fourth trochanter of Giganosaurus was also very small and underdeveloped. 
The fourth trochanter is a muscle attachment point on the femur where the cordofemoralis longus attaches to it. This muscle is what pulls the femur back during running or walking, so for Giganosaurus to have an underdeveloped fourth trochanter suggests it probably didn't need to run very fast. Again, it mainly fed on sauropods, so it didn't need to be very fast. Besides this evolutionary development, most likely as a result of hunting large sauropods, it also developed a much different feeding method than Tyrannosaurus. Gignosaurus, like other large carcodontosaurids, developed long, narrow skulls and sharp serrated teeth. This design isn't good for crushing bone, with the Gignosaurus holotype being found to only have a bite force of 2980 psi unilaterally, which would mean nearly 6000 psi bilaterally. And according to a blog post from the Italian Theropoda blog post website, Gignosaurus' muscles were designed for quick up-down movements in comparison to Tyrannosaurus' muscles made for quick side-to-side -side movements. Giganosaurus was more so designed to cut through flesh to cause prey to bleed out quickly, which Dinopedia.fanum.com lists as brutal and unethical, but effective. Which makes me laugh, since last time I checked, it's only humans who made up the idea of what's ethical and what's not. Nature doesn't care about ethics. PrehistoricWildlife.com states this feeding method as an adaptation for taking on sauropods, due to how hard it would be to break their bones. It would make more sense to slice off some chunks of flesh and wait for them to bleed out or die from infection. People tend to make out sauropods as these massive, invincible animals that destroy anything in their path, but the reality is they weren't and would have succumbed to wounds eventually. Especially if we believe one theory proposed about Giganotosaurus, which is that it might have been a pack hunter. Between 1997 and 2001, seven individuals of Mapusaurus were dug up shortly after Giganotosaurus was named and partly described. For a while, these were thought to be Giganotosaurus until they were named in 2006 as a new species. This is what started the myth of Giganotosaurus living with Argentinosaurus, by the way. Anyway, these seven individuals being found together prompted speculation that perhaps these animals were pack hunters, and since Mapusaurus is closely related to Giganotosaurus, some have speculated further that maybe, just maybe, Giganotosaurus pack hunted. I'd say it would be best to wait for more specimens of Giganosaurus and Mapusaurus to be dug up. If we find more individuals together, and not more single individuals, that'd be a good indication these were pack animals in my eyes. However, you'd probably find it would be more so along the lines of Komodo dragon type pack hunting, where it's just a loose gang that mindlessly mobs anything in their path. The intelligence of these animals wasn't the best. The brain case of Giganosaurus, to my knowledge, is one of the only parts of the animal that has gotten a proper scientific description. Paulina 2012, according to theropods and other dinosaur forms, found that the holotype has a reptile encephalization quotient of 0.98 and a bird encephalization quotient of 0.07. These are measurements of intelligence, as you may have guessed. And according to theropods and other dinosaur forms, the normal or average expected is 1.0, so Giganosaurus is marginally worse than the average reptile and completely stupid when compared to birds, though it could be worse for Giganosaurus. It could be like Carcodontosaurus specimen SGM-DIN1, who is listed in the same book on one page as holding the record for the worst cognitive abilities of any theropod. Now, enough about hunting and time to talk about controversies, myths, and other things about the animal. First one being the good old bigger than T-Rex myth. It's often been said online that until Giganosaurus was discovered in the 1990s, T-Rex was thought to be the biggest carnivorous dinosaur for nearly an entire century. Which I find funny, since I've seen people also say that about Carcodontosaurus and Spinosaurus, despite Spinosaurus being discovered in 1912 and Carcodontosaurus in 1924, meaning we have been aware of Spinosaurus's and Carcodontosaurus's existence for longer than Clint Eastwood has been alive. Anyway, as I remember saying in my Carcodontosauridae Tyrannosauridae video, we can't really tell for now. 
Tyrannosaurus has like 40 plus individuals we can go off of, so we can easily get an idea of an average size for the animal. Meanwhile, we can't do that with Giganotosaurus, because all we have is a skeleton about 70% complete, a fragmentary jaw, and some teeth and possible trackways. However, if we were to go off of the overall build of these animals, T-Rex is most likely going to be the heavier one. First off, one thing used here and there to determine the weight of dinosaurs is the femur. A femur of Tyrannosaurus equal in length to Giganosaurus's femur was found to be larger in circumference, which indicates a larger animal, since the femur would be supporting most of the animal's weight and would have to be thicker to support a larger animal. And even if we want to go off of that, since I recall reading something saying it isn't a reliable method for reasons they didn't explain, T-Rex was a very heavily built animal. It was very wide, robust, and just overall a big, round, chunky boy of a theropod. This means that even if we debate which estimates are more reliable than others, we can still expect T-Rex to come out on top, simply because of the depth of the chest cavity, the thickness of its bones, and many other things. Moving on, another thing I've noticed is that it seems like some people don't seem to understand how to pronounce its name, with some pronouncing the G at the beginning like a J. Giganotosaurus. As far as I know, the correct way of pronouncing it is Giganotosaurus. And on top of that, people also seem to have trouble spelling it, with quite a few either intentionally or mistakenly spelling it as Gigantosaurus. Gigantosaurus is actually the name of a dubious genus of sauropod, and the way you actually spell Giganotosaurus correctly is G-I-G-A-N-O-T-O-S-A-U-R-U-S. Giganosaurus, as a result of the fame it's got from the media advertising it as being bigger than T-Rex, has made numerous appearances in games, films, shows, and everything in between, including the recently released Jurassic World Diminishing Returns. Notable films being the 2008 film Journey to the Center of the Earth, according to dinopedia.fandom.com, though I've seen some people online say it's actually T-Rex who appears in the film. Giganosaurus is also the main antagonist in the fifth Land Before Time film, The Mysterious Island where it's basically their T-Rex design with keratin plates and three fingers, the plates having reportedly given it the title of Plated Sharp Tooth by fans. Also, apparently it's voiced by Megatron voice actor Frank Welker, because this guy's been everywhere, I guess. One shall stand, and one shall fall. You, Optimus Prime! Giganosaurus has also appeared in Dino Crisis 2, where it's shown oversized and being able to throw an adult Tyrannosaurus with ease. This oversizing has also become a trend in other video games, such as in Jurassic World Evolution 2, where it's dared to be 14 tons in weight in the in-game dinosaur database, while T-Rex is 8.4 tons according to the database. Another, probably more famous example is Ark Survival Evolved, soon to be Ark Survival Ascended, if the community doesn't kill the devs first, where it's dared to be the largest and strongest carnivorous dinosaur in the game, although once you tame it, it becomes much weaker, and it also has a rage meter which you gotta keep your eyes on. If you don't, once that rage meter reaches its limit, it will kick you off and try and kill you. Alongside its appearance in Dominion, according to dinopedia.fanum.com, it's also stated that Giganosaur DNA was used to make the Indominus Rex, the main dinosaur villain of the Jurassic World 2015 film. Giganosaurus also appears in Jurassic World the game as a rare dinosaur, where alongside Europocephalus, it can be used to make the hybrid Gigantocephalus. In Jurassic World Alive, it is an epic dinosaur which you can fuse with the legendary hybrid Triostrinix to make the unique hybrid Giganix. And of course, it also appears in the popular, but now shut down, video game, Jurassic Park Builder. I remember also getting asked once if I'll ever do a video on the Dinosaur King video game, and even though I don't plan to do so, since I don't have a Nintendo DS, and the game is probably now a super expensive collectible, I feel like I should at least mention Giganosaurus' appearance in the game. Just to quickly go over it, I personally am not a big fan of the design. It honestly looks more so like someone tried to draw a fusion of Carcodontosaurus and Tyrannosaurus and later just relabeled it as Giganosaurus. Beyond that, I'm not really sure what to think of this design overall. 
And the final media appearance I'll list off is that in unpublished works of my own, I too feature the giant southern lizard. Will I ever release said unpublished works? We'll see. But for now, I'm not saying anything besides Giganosaurus and some other Carcodon swords will appear in it in some capacity. To end this video, Giganosaurus was an amazing animal, though it remains poorly understood. Really, when it comes to this animal, even though we have a 70% complete skeleton, that's not good enough to understand the animal as a whole. All we can say is that we understand this individual in some capacity and that's it. Yes, we have some teeth and a fragmentary jawbone, but we need to go back to the holotype to understand anything about those. So what's even the point in mentioning them apart from saying that when scaled up from the holotype, the jaw is believed to have belonged to a 8.5 metric ton individual. Anyway, hopefully you liked and subscribed, and I'll see you next time I upload.